we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Today I welcome you to the last Sunday in the month of June. And it's my prayer that as we hear the, this message and cross over to the second half of this year, the Lord God Almighty will bless us. Today's topic is follow me. Follow me. This is an invitation from Jesus Christ, not to his 12 apostles, but to us today. It is now our time to hear the same word, follow me, the same way he said it to the disciples and they followed. Let us pray. Savior, you came to save some time ago, and to today you are still saving. You depend on us who are alive. A lot depends on us today. Father, please help us to stand strong. Even till today, you are still saying, Daughter, follow me. Son, follow me. Lord, let's hear these words again. These two words, follow me. And let it resound in the deepest part of our hearts. Speak it again, O Lord, and help us to respond. Let everything that is dead in us wake up so that we can get up today and follow you in newness of life. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Your word giveth understanding to the simple. Your word is light, lighting every darkness in our lives. Purify our hearts with the fire of your word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. We are talking about follow me. Jesus Christ is bringing an invitation to us today. It is not a new invitation. It is the same one that went to the apostles. Jesus Christ is bringing the same invitation to us today to follow him. These are not many words. Just two words. Follow me. Why is he inviting us to do what? And what will be our game? Is there any challenge when we follow him? Let us look at the text. Matthew chapter 4, 18 to 22. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, Casting the net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straight away left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, Mandy their nets. And he called them, and immediately left the sheep and their father and followed him. Jesus Christ knew that the work he came to do would not be done correctly. If he does not have any followers, so he decided to choose twelve, and the twelve that the twelve would be with him, and that they will carry on the work of the ministry. Mark chapter 3, 13 to 15 says, And he goeth up into a mountain, and called unto him whom he would, 
and they came unto him. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach, and to have power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. He called twelve that they would be with him. First, be with him, be transformed before he sent them out. And that is exactly what he did. And while the twelve were with him, they were completely transformed to the point that as at the time Judas was to betray Jesus, remember Jesus worked for about three and a half years. He was a public figure. Jesus was pulling crowds. He was a teacher. He taught in their synagogues for years. He was doing miracles. He was teaching. He was, remember, Jesus Christ fed 5,000 people. That was a kind of crowd he was pulling. Yet, it was so challenging for the leaders of the Jews to recognize Jesus Christ. The Jewish leaders had a problem when they were to crucify Jesus, when it was time for him to be betrayed. Judas Iscariot was ready. They themselves, they were ready. They had an agreement, but they said, we have a problem. The problem is that we don't know him. All of you look alike. And he said, the one I am going to kiss, hold him. Listen, we are talking about someone more than a prophet. Someone more than just a mere miracle worker. We are talking about the great teacher. The one who worked wonders. We are talking about the son of God. God in the flesh, God dwelling among men. Yet, it was difficult for people to recognize him. Not just ordinary people, but leaders. Leaders. Religious leaders. It was difficult for them to recognize Jesus because he looked so much. He was so humble. He was wearing the same type of clothes with the disciples. At the time, he even washed the disciples' feet to show the level of Jesus' humility. He was so humble, and the disciples were so transformed to the point that it became difficult to know the follower and the leader. It was difficult to distinguish between the leader and the disciples. Why? Because he called them that they might be with him. That they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach. So while they were with him, they behaved like him. They walked like him. They talked like him. They lived like him. They left everything. And they did not just leave everything. They also were ready. They were ready to be transformed. So they were transformed by the renewing of their minds. They were so transformed from within that even physically it was difficult to distinguish who was the master and who were the followers. It was difficult. Today it's a shame that it is difficult to distinguish a, a, a believer from an unbeliever. Physical appearances is difficult because the world has so much poured into the church and the church has been so mixed with the world that what we have in a lot of congregations today is mixed multitude. We have missed multitude. And it's not going to change. It is not going to change because Jesus Christ said, Iniquity shall abound. 
sin shall increase. It is going to increase. Satan is going to have more hold, a stronger hold on Christians, on the church, on the world, before the appearing of the Son of Man in the clouds. There must be a falling away first. And we are seeing the falling away. The disciples were so committed. Jesus Christ said, follow me. Be with me that I may pour myself into you. And let me tell you, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and broke it and he gave it to the disciples. After he had given thanks, he said, take, this is my body. Eat it, become like me. I have come. I became a man that man may become like me. Jesus Christ is the incarnate word of God. He came, Emmanuel. He became God, putting on human flesh, the everlasting Father, the mighty God, putting on human flesh. And then he broke the bread. He said, this is my body. Eat this. He also took the cup and blessed it. After he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, this is my blood that is shed for you for the remission of sins. He poured himself completely on us. This is what a Christian is supposed to be. When you hear the word, follow me. Number one, you have to follow immediately. Because you can't guarantee the next minute. You can't guarantee the next second. You cannot guarantee the next minute. I remember a day I was working at the hospital, St. Andrew's Hospital. Suddenly, they rushed some people to the hospital. They rushed some men. It was late in the night, about, I think about 11 o'clock, 11 p.m. They rushed some people to the hospital. And they were dead. I think only one survived. All, all of them were dead. Then other people rushed down. Across the road, there was a brothel. There is a brutal is still existing today in the Korea Road Worry. They rushed down. And one of the ladies was saying, I worked in that brutal. I'm a sex worker. I worked there. And uh, this man came with a car. He said he wants to take us. And I, 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 I had a customer and I needed to attend to the customer. So I, I wanted to go, but I said, let me attend to the customer first. And, but they couldn't wait. They left few poles away from the brothel. They had an accident. Some of them died flat instantly. Instantly they died. The same road, few poles from there. Not up to a kilometer. I think only one person survived. That was how they died. You cannot give any guarantee about the next second. We are only sure of the time that is past. We cannot be sure of the next second. The time is pregnant. It can give birth to death. Just as we see that it gave birth to life. That is why we are alive right now. The time is unpredictable. It is pregnant. Nobody knows the type of child is going to give birth to. When you hear the call, when you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. You may be a believer hearing the sound of my voice today, but there are ways in your life this message is addressing you. There are areas of your life this message is addressing. 
Jesus is saying, follow me and be with me. Some of us have followed him, but we are not yet with him. We are not spending time with him. But the purpose of the call is for him to spend time with us, pour himself on us, and also make his blood run in our veins, pour his spirit upon us so that we can be equipped enough. Look, look, look. He said, and look at verse 14, Mark 3, 14. And he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that they might, and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. Without spending time with him, without him pouring himself on us, without us being born again, it is impossible for us to go out there to preach and cast out devils and heal all manner of sicknesses. It is impossible. When he called us, Jesus did not fake the call. He said, the work is, he was so straightforward. Look, when he called Simon, Peter, and Andrew, he said, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. Very straightforward. The primary thing, the primary purpose is that for him to make them fishers of men. And they followed. So all their lives, they were to fish men and no longer go to hunt fishes in the water. No wonder when Peter and some of the apostles, after Jesus resurrected, before the Pentecost, between his resurrection and the Pentecost, when Peter went fishing and took some of the disciples, Jesus went there and asked him, do you love me? Do you love me? Why are you here again? I told you to fish men. I just said, wait for me until you are endued with power. Why are you here to fish? Remember, the Lord will always make provision for the food you need. If he has called you into full-time ministry, there is no time anymore. No time anymore for fishing. He will provide. But unfortunately, a lot of us who have followed him, we want the good things of life. We want private jets. We want the best car. So when the offering or the salary is not enough, when the tithe is not enough, we abandon the sheep and we go and look for other means to raise funds because, because we want to live well. But listen, the Lord that has called you, the God that called you into the ministry knows that you need these things. If he has called you into fishing men, don't go and fish fishes anymore. Fishmen, he will provide. It's not just about fishing men, but he told us the danger. Jesus did not paint or sugarcoat the gospel. A lot of people should have got, got the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is why we have missed multitudes today. The gospel is very straightforward. If you believe the gospel, the day you receive the gospel, that, that day your name is written in the book of life. Your name disappears, is wiped off the book of death. But that same day, your name enters the diary of the devil. You become his target because initially... You were with him. And when you were transformed, you were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And your name gets wiped off the book of death. Satan sees you as an enemy. He sees you as a loss. You were a prophet to him. But now he sees you as a loss. And he goes after you. That day, your name is written in the book of life. Your name is also written in the diary of the prince of the darkness of this world. Look at what Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 24 verses 9 and 10. He did not pretend 
He told us the danger. He said, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and you sh- and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Yes, this is exactly what is happening. Christians are hated all over the world. If there is no hatred coming to you and you are a believer, I tell you, it is either because you are hiding the light that you're supposed to shine or you are a hypocrite. You cannot shine the true light of Christ in this evil world and not be hated by all men. That is the truth. They will hate you. They will come after you. They will persecute you. And look at what Peter said. Peter asked Jesus Christ, Lord, we that followed you, what will be our gain? Listen. We have a reward. It is not just about being persecuted. We also have a reward. And our reward is great. Our reward is in heaven, and our reward is great. Mark chapter 10, verses 28 to 30. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, There is no man that have left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive an hundred now in this time, houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, and, and lands with persecutions, and in the world to come, eternal life. This is what we shall receive. But we must live first. A lot of people don't want to leave. A lot of people don't want to leave their brethren. They don't want to leave lands. They don't want to leave money. They don't want to leave houses. Two days ago, I went to cut my hair. As I was having the haircut in the saloon, I heard the barber, the the guy that was Bobby my hair was laughing. He was laughing. He was so distracted. And I asked him, why are you not concentrating? And I said, F-. they were talking about the man that died. I never knew he was a prophet. And he was laughing and laughing. He was laughing so hard and he was so distracted. And then I told him, I said, forget about the dead. Let the dead bury themselves and concentrate on me that is alive. And he was laughing, and then I asked, what's the problem? He said, there was a prophet who was a beggar on a public motorpark. He used to beg people, and all of a sudden, while he was begging on the motorpark, he got the call of God to become a prophet. And what he was doing was that he used to pray for scammers. That scammers used to go to his church. And he would bless them that they would succeed in their scamming business. Business in quotes. And that he had a surgery and after 10 days he died. So this guy and the people that were there, they were laughing. They were laughing at a woman who was his church member. She felt so embarrassed and had to leave. But the two barbers were laughing. They were so carried away. They were laughing at the prophet. They said, people used to run to him. So this man dies too. So he died. Why will he die? He was so much concerned about the money. And he died. And I told them that he was never a prophet. How can you say someone who was welcoming scammers, thieves, criminals, into his church, not for the sake of repentance, not because he wanted to preach to them, but because he was blessing them. How could you say he was a pastor? 
How could you say he's a prophet? A lot of people don't want to leave their dubious businesses. You remember Zacchaeus. When Jesus Christ went to his house, he repented. Even though he was a tax collector, the things he collected fraudulently, he said he will return them fourfold times four. Do you remember Matthew? Matthew left his work. He was a tax collector. Tax collectors, they were the worst sinners according to the categorization of the Jews. They were the worst sinners because they were oppressing the Jews. They were oppressing their own brethren. And they would not even collect the amount that the Roman leaders, the Roman government asked them to collect. They would collect extra. So to them, they were the worst sinners. But the call of God met Matthew, follow me. Matthew left everything. He left everything and followed. And he was transformed. Today, a lot of people don't want to leave any, anything behind. But they want to enjoy the kingdom. They are after the things that Jesus Christ would give. Jesus Christ said in verse 20, 29, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that had left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife for the gospel's sake. He said he shall receive an hundred fold now in this time. Now people are after the hundredfold. They are after the hundredfold now. And they have left off the gospel of truth. The gospel of salvation is suffering today. I have never preached prosperity gospel any day. I have never preached it. That's prosperity gospel of sowing money and receiving in abundance so that you can be blessed. I have been a pastor since 2011 and I have never preached that gospel any day, over 10 years. But God is taking care of me. He takes care of me. The money I realized from my ministry is the same one I use in paying children's school fees. There are about 100 children right now. And there are widows. There are other programs ongoing. God has been providing. There are people who are faithful in giving. There are people who have been supporting me. It's not every time I see food to eat. But God provides. Hunger has never killed me any day. It's not every time I have money in my account. But God will always provide. There is no time that I don't see money to pay the children's school fees. There will always be money. God always provides. People don't want to leave their lands. They don't want to leave their dubious businesses. They don't want to leave their bad character. They don't want to stop lying. They don't want to stop scamming people. But they want the hundredfolds right here, right now. They want it. But before you can have the hundredfold, you have to leave these things first. Let's look at some people. Jesus Christ told the truth. They are called the would-be disciples. They wanted to be disciples, but they couldn't. Luke chapter 9, verse 58 to 62. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes. This is a man that wanted to follow Jesus Christ. Foxes have holes. And best of the air have nests. But the Son of Man had nowhere to lay his head. This is how a lot of people start ministry. This is how a lot of people start. When Jesus Christ calls you, he also 
pass you through some process. A lot of people, when they pass through this process, they give up. Some of them don't want to pass through their wilderness. They don't want to. They are after the money. They are after the prosperity. They are after the fame. They are after the glory of ministry. But they don't want to pass through the wilderness. But the wilderness is a place of molding. The wilderness is a place you get disciplined. Let's continue. Verse 52. And he said unto another, verse 59. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Go and preach the kingdom, not prosperity, not a sugar-coated message. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go. Bid them farewell, which are at home, at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. No man, if you put your hands to the plow, and you look back, it means you are no longer fit for the kingdom of God. If I call you, follow me. Follow without a waste of time. A lot of people have reasons. Now, what many people do, they go with these things. They put their hands to the plow and take the plow along while following. There is a lot of multitudes today. There are lots of multitudes following Jesus Christ. Like, just like the time of Jesus when he said, you are following me. Because you ate bread. You are following me because of bread. Please. If you want to follow. Know the cost of discipleship. Discipleship can cost you your life. Discipleship can cost you everything. Discipleship can cost you your money, your days, your time, everything in your career. But I tell you the truth. No sacrifice is too much for the kingdom. There is no sacrifice that is too much. Remember the topic is follow me. Are you following? Some of us are following, but we are not following Jesus. We are following the man of God. A lot of people are following, very zealous, but they are under bewitchment. They are so committed, but they are under bewitchment. Somebody has bewitched them, just like Paul. That wrote in tears. Oh foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you. That you no longer believe the truth. They were zealous. But the zeal. Was under bewitchment. It was because of bewitchment. A lot of people. Are zealous today. Zealous doing the work of God. Zealous giving. To the work of God. But. They are not following Jesus Christ. They are following men of God. And unfortunately, many of these men of God they are following, they don't tell them the truth. I don't have many followers. And I don't care. It is not about the multitude. It is about the few. Jesus Christ said, many are called, but few are chosen. It is not about the multitude. It is about those who have their names written in the book of life. Those who have their names, the elect, they are not many. We preach the truth to the world. Let those who have ears hear the message of the gospel. It is not for everybody. 
It is for those whose names are written in the book of life. Who are you following? Are you following a man of God who doesn't tell you the truth? Or are you are following Jesus Christ? Are you following a denomination? Or you are following your master that died for you? Who are you following? Have you left the things that can easily weigh you down? Or you are going with your loads of sins? Have you been born again? A lot of people don't want to be born again. A lot of people come into the church with their evil powers, with their magic books, with their magical powers. They come in with their witchcraft. They come in with their evil spirits. They come in with their demons and they don't want the demons to go. That is the number one problem we have in Christianity today. So many witches and wizards in church. Some of them are in the altar. Some of them are in different offices. That is the number one problem of the church today. If you speak the truth, they pronounce death sentence upon you. They pronounce sickness upon you. They pursue you. As a matter of fact, I say it. In the midst multitude, if they are asked to choose be between the devil and the speaker of the bitter truth, they rather kill the speaker of the bitter truth than shoot the devil to death. That is the truth. That means if the devil is killable, if the devil can die, but the devil doesn't die. But that is exactly how much they hate the truth. This is a time of the falling away. As Jesus called you, do you spend time with him so that you can be transformed? He has called us to preach. Do you preach? A lot of us think that we are called to receive salvation and that's all. That is not all. We are called to receive salvation, but that is not all. Before Jesus Christ left, he gave us the great commission to go and evangelize, to go and preach. A lot of people are out there preaching, but they are not preaching the kingdom. They don't preach repentance. Most of our preachers today don't talk about repentance. They talk about the good things of heaven. They talk about the good things of God. They talk about prosperity. They talk about the blessings. They talk about miracles. They talk about the good things of the kingdom. But they don't preach the gospel. What is the gospel? Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That is the gospel. John preached it. Jesus Christ preached it. The apostles preached it. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repentance is the gospel that Jesus Christ has come to give us life. You have to repent and accept the gospel and be admitted into the kingdom. But today, majority of our preachers don't preach it. Look at the top pastors today, top preachers of the gospel. How many of them do preach repentance? They preach financial prosperity, preach all the good things, but the message of repentance is dead. It is too old right now. A lot of people no longer preach it. Why? Because if they tell them the truth, if they tell their hearers the truth, they will no longer give money. That is exactly what I experienced too. When you tell people the bitter truth, they see you as an enemy. But I tell you, it is better to be fed by ravens than to be fed with filthy hands. Yes, God will always provide. He has provided for me for over 10 years. And he still provides till today. God will never allow his word to die. He will never allow the gospel to stop spreading across the world. He will always provide for his work. So it doesn't matter who is angry or not. We will continue to preach the truth. But let me tell you the truth. The gospel is bigger and more important than us, the preachers. The message of the gospel is more important than us who preach it. If you must follow, you have to know that the time is coming 
when you will meet with challenges. And there are times you will need to give up your life to defend the gospel. Let me tell you the truth. This word, this Bible is bigger than me. This Bible is bigger than me. I am to adjust my ways. It is for me to change my ways and adjust my life to the terms of this book and live according to the commands, to the written word of God. I have, I have no right to add nor remove from it. I have no right to interpret it to suit my lifestyle. You as a believer, you that hear this message today, you are not coming into this, this kingdom or you are not in this kingdom to change the word of God. It is the word of God that changes us. So be ready for that. And I tell you the truth. There are times you need to deny yourself because it will stand because situations will arise that you will need to choose between following Jesus Christ or denying yourself. And I tell you, if you can deny yourself, if you can give up your life for the sake of the gospel, we have a reward in heaven. We have a reward. Do not give up. Let me read the last scripture. As of Apostle chapter 4 verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. They marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They were with Jesus. They were with him. And Jesus Christ poured himself upon them. And after that, they were completely transformed. Jesus Christ is calling you today. He's not just calling you to have life, but he is calling you so that having been saved, when you put on the helmet of salvation, after putting on the helmet of salvation, you have to take the breastplate of righteousness to protect the vital organs. After you have put on the helmet of salvation, after you have been saved, you go out and win souls. After you have been endued with power, you have to go out to preach and win souls. There are souls dying. Souls are dying. People are perishing on a daily basis. We Christians, we have a lot to do. We have a lot of work to do. Have you been with Jesus? Has it impacted you? Have you been with him? Have you been transformed? Are you a church goer? Are you already? Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming very soon. He's coming. He's so near. He will no longer delay his coming. The Lord Jesus is coming soon. The rapture can take place anytime. If he comes, where will you be? Are you following? When you heard him before, did you follow? And when you followed, did you follow him with all your heart? This is a moment of reflection. It is time to reflect. Think about your life. Even as I think about my life. Are you faithful to the call? Are you faithful to the call? Are you a child of God? Are you faithful to the call? Have you been carried away? Or you are at your master's business? Let us pray. Lord, help us your children. Who want to follow? Help us to follow. Any Lord in the lives of your children 
Any heavy load that they don't supposed to move with, that they are carrying, Lord, take them away. Give them the grace to overcome sin. Give your children the grace to overcome the troubles of this life. Whatsoever thing you need, receive it. The grace to answer the call. The resources, the health to follow. The strength, the anointing to carry out your ministry. Receive it today in the name of Jesus. May the Lord God Almighty help you. May the power of the Lord help you. May the Spirit of God Most High help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those of you who want to reconcile with God, I pray for you that the power of the Lord will be available to you this moment. Those of you who hadn't repented genuinely and you want to repent genuinely, receive grace. May the Lord God Almighty forgive you your past and accept you wholly into his kingdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God, for answering our prayer. I pray for as many who have been supporting our ministry. Lord, support their lives. Support them. Not many people support us. Lord, those who support us, support them. Those who don't have, Father, please give to them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, take away problems from the lives of your children. May the Lord take away problems from your life. May every problem, any power of the Lord said, I should pray in this limitation. I'm seeing a dwarf, someone with a small stature. The Lord says, pray in this limitation. I know this is for someone. I pray for you that the yoke of limitation break from your life right now. Receive your testimony. Receive that miracle. May every limitation that is around you be destroyed. This week, may the Lord show himself strong in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm waiting to hear your testimony. Lord, perfect your word in the life of these your children. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. We pray, O oh Lord God, that you help us to be holy. Help us to be watchful so that you will not meet us sleeping or meet us already offended in the name of Jesus Christ. May your grace see us true. Support the weak, heal the sick, strengthen the faint-hearted in the name of Jesus. Bless those who are lacking. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Please share this message with someone. And we also plead with you that you support our ministry. Please don't forget to give. It doesn't matter how small it is. Please support us. Not many people support us. We have a lot of projects we are running in our charity organization, Osana David Foundation Incorporated. Please support us, and the good Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Also, invite other people to listen to us, to join us. And also, remember me in prayer, even as I pray for you. I have a list of you that I pray for. Those of you who are following this ministry, I pray for you. And I also ask that you pray for me. Thank you, and God bless you. Please share this video with someone and don't forget to subscribe to this channel Ozana e. E. David. i also encourage you to like and comment so that youtube and other social media platforms can recommend this video to other people god bless you bye bye we hope you were blessed by this message for more information visit our website www.ozanadavid.com Email us at info at hosannadavid.com God bless you.